Welcome to Elite Dangerous, another game I've been playing. Space simulation, trading simulation, and a little bit of combat. I'm going to be going through some basics uh, about how to dock and uh, make some money. So, uh, take a gander, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Madame, the negotiations are far from concluded. Madame! Unlike the Empress, we will not be charmed by your pilot tricks. all set. Go for open play. All right, I'm using a Thrustmaster uh, Warthog, uh, which is mapped out fairly uh, easily, lets you go back and forth on these things. Navigate around. So we're going to go to Starport Services, is where you start. And uh, you'll start with a thousand credits. And here you get to look through the various different uh, sections. Commodities market where you can buy material to transport back and forth. And with the Sidewinder, you're going to have four slots, not a whole lot. Uh, you can go to the bulletin board where you can find missions. The missions often pay more than uh, delivering cargo. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got here. Got a light transport, some wine, three of them. Okay, it's 4.76 light years away, well within the range of my jump. Uh, something that you have to watch out for sometimes you get missions for. Um, Places that you can't get to. It's too far away. So we're going to take this on. That's uh, almost 2,200 credits. That's worth uh, doing. So we're going to accept that. And uh, let's take a look here. 
Can't do that one because uh, we don't have enough space. At least right now. And toxic waste. We can deliver some toxic waste. We can make 5,200. And crop busters. Just need a need of some bioreducing lichen. Find that because we simply don't have the space. Uh, repairs. You'll stop in here and uh, check the health of your ship. Munitions. If you have expendable ammunition, typically when you start, you have a laser. It doesn't uh, expend uh, bullets. Let's take a look at our contacts. Black market. And this is where you can pay off bounties. If you have a bounty, you will appear wanted, and people can't attack you. Probably not something you want to do. Universal cartographics. If you scan the system, come here, and if you're 20 light years away from where you scanned it, you can sell the data. Over here, it tells you how far you are from where this was scanned. So I've got some stuff that is uh, fairly worth a decent amount of money, but I've got to go a decent distance to, to get there. So I am going to go ahead and launch, and we're going to head to the uh, system, we'll look over at my nav computer, and see if I can't uh, navigate to location that I want to go to, which is uh, Karavi Lock Destination. Now we'll put it on my HUD so I know where to go. Wait to be disengaged here. Ship released. And thrust up. And out. And you can see on my uh, HUD, right next to the 52%, to the left of that, is a little blue dot that it has a circle, not a full. That means it's behind me. So I'm going to turn bring it up to the top, and then pull back on the stick, and you'll see it'll go solid as soon as it's in front of me. Now I'm pulling it down, and there it is right there. My gear is down. You'll notice I'll speed up. And in the right-hand side, you can see that I'm mass-locked. It means I can't jump. As soon as I get 5,000 meters away from the station, I'll be able to jump, which I've just done. So I'm going to hit J which then Bob's your uncle or uh, and at this case it will then jump and I will uh, land in the system I've got a cargo that I'm going to deliver and once I jump into the other system I will pull up my cargo information to the right and I will then be able to uh, see which station I need to navigate to when you're in jump or hyperspace you can't pull up your computers it won't let you. All right. And you don't want to get too close to a star, otherwise you'll overheat. So I'm going to pull away from the star. I'm going to do my D scanner, which I have mapped to my secondary. The way that I do that is I go to fire groups, come down, pull the trigger until it says number two. And now I'm going to hold it until it finishes charging, and we'll see if we discover any undiscovered objects here in this sector. And over here, got an unidentified signal source. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to look at transactions. And we are going to Fullerton Horizons. So let's go there, map that before we get too far away. Right here, 184 light seconds. And it does appear that we're moving away from it exactly directly behind us. You can see in the left, it's a half, it's a circle not filled in. We're going to pull around here because we're moving at 20 times the speed of light. And there we go. When you're navigating in uh, Super Cruise, which is what this is called, you want to make sure that you stay around 6 to 8 seconds. As you start out, keep it at about 8 seconds. That will um, be a little more controllable so you don't fly past things. And the time that you see there is, is in light seconds, and the time below it is in seconds if you are stayed at a constant speed. But your super cruise doesn't do that. It kind of compensates as you're getting closer or farther away from objects. Unidentified signal sources, if you lock onto those, uh, oftentimes you can find uh, valuables there that you can pick up. In this case, we're going to deliver our uh, cargo and get our payout. Continuing to monitor our time here. It's like we're about eight seconds out, which is just where we want to be. You'll notice it takes longer than eight seconds. 
would be tempted to accelerate and then slow down, but your ship only slows down at a certain pace and you'll fly right past your uh, target. In the uh, left-hand side, you'll see alignment and speed and distance. It's covered up by the uh, image, the video camera for me. There's two blue sections in those. Once you're inside those sections, you've slowed down enough and your distance is close enough. Uh, you will uh, be able to safely jump out of uh, Super Cruise. And it doesn't matter how close you are to the uh, object you're going to. It just matters that you get a safe disengage ready. And you'll notice I'm about 600 kilometers away, but when I actually come out, I'm only about eight clicks away. And now I'm going to radio to him and ask to dock once I'm 7.5 clicks away. I go to contacts, click on that, request docking. Docking request granted. And it tells me to proceed to landing pad two. All right, so right now I see that right under the Fullerton Horizons logo is a uh, kind of holographic square flashing at me. What I want to do is I want to rotate that and see if I can discern where the landing pad number is. Right now I can tell it's just to the right of the box on the right side. And I want to fly in from that, away from that, to it go the other way, it will not let you land. You'll be facing the wrong way, and there is no yaw control in this game that I've discovered yet that really lets you move. So now I am positioned. I'm going to fly down a little bit so I can line up. Rotate here. I'm a little bit off. So I'm going to fly over just a hair. There we go. I'm going to extend my gear and fly it on in. A lot of people complain about not being able to um, land on the landing pads, most likely that is because you are coming in from the wrong direction. I'm going to switch to radar mode here in just a second. And there it is. Wait until it turns blue. Once it does, I'll need to go over a little bit. Oh, and now I'm going to drop down. And this actually should be just fine. It should correct me. Hear the beeping as I get closer, and it looks like I'm not far. I'm not there far enough. So I'm going to go ahead and go into reverse. The position on the joystick. There we go. Now I'm going to drop down, Docking and I've docked. Engines disengaged. And it's considered polite to go ahead and enter the hangar, otherwise you're going to lock up this landing zone for everybody else, and they'll have to wait for you to clear it. So I'm going to go ahead and enter hangar. I'm going to go to Starport Services. Welcome to Fullerton Horizons. First floor, lingerie, women's clothing, and other unmentionables. All right, so I'm going to go to my contacts, or the bulletin board, rather. Right at the top, you can see here it's going to say deliver cargo. This is that light cargo that I was transporting, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it and give the cargo. You'll notice I have 37.5K uh, credits. 2.1K is uh, going to be... Uh, given to me when I do this, so I'm going to give the cargo, and I immediately jump up to almost 40, so it did pay me. Here it tells you kind of what happens to the uh, sexual base. You do have an effect on its uh, economic situation, and it, your reputation can increase and decrease. In this case, the reputation went up for the faction Nagal Leap Network. Economics improved, and my influ the influence here went up just a little bit, 0%, so it didn't really matter. Back. And there's no missions here for me, so this is kind of a bust of a trip. I'm going to have to get some uh, commodities market and see if I can uh, sell anything there. Buy something for the next uh, location. Hydrogen fuel, high supply. That means you're going to have a good price. I can buy it for 94 and the galactic average is 147 So just about a 50% profit, although on a low amount. And with the credits I have right now, which is just about 40000 I want to buy expensive things so I can maximize my profit. Here I might make 200 or 300 credits. Let's see, anything else here that has some high, let's see, gold, no. Uh, indium, that might be decent. Indium uh, says that it is exported to BD-10. Let's go ahead and see where BD-10 is. Go ahead and navigate to our galaxy map. Click on that. And we're gonna see if we can find BD-10. So. 
BD10. Search. Wow. 3,867 light years away. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be, uh, yeah, route unavailable. That means my jump engines just aren't strong enough to get there. So i uh, glad I checked that because um, that's just not going to be an option. So we're going to go ahead and exit from there. Let's see what else we can uh, buy. This one might be good. Now it's going to BD-10 as well. Everything's going to BD-10. Oh, Kremen. Uranium, 25. Oh, this might be good. I'm going to buy these. One, two, three. And Kremen. And let's find out where Kremen is. I think that's close to us just because I happen to uh, recognize the name. So, Kremen. There we go. Just one jump away. 5.8 light years away. And we can jump over there and uh, sell this off and see what happens. So, exit. Exit again, and we're going to set Kremain as our goal. There's some unexplored stuff here, so we let's do some exploring too before we head out. So we're going to set this first one here. Ah, these look like belt clusters, um, which are yet to get very close to them, so we're going to pass on that. But uh, now we'll do the first one so I can show you how that works. So we're locked in destination. So now we're locked and it'll be on our nav computer. Left-hand side, you can see that it is indeed a... Uh, Asteroid belt, and it's behind us. So uh, we'll go to Starport Services one more time. We've already refilled. Go ahead and launch. And we're going to want to lift off. There we go. Landing gear retracted. And turn and bring that up to the top so we can pull into it. And pull right into it. And we're not going to be able to get there just by using our standard thruster at 159 kilometers an hour. That just won't work. Um, it's almost a, a year away at this speed. One of the things we can do is over on the right-hand side next door, blue ring shields, you can see we have system, engines, and weapon. We can allocate different ratios to that. So I can increase my systems, which recharges things like my shields, scanners, things like that. You'll find that my scanner charges up faster. You can't go into super cruise with your weapons out, so I'll put those away. I can increase my weapons. Or I can increase my engines. In this case, I'm doing exploration, so those are, that's what I want. You'll notice that my speed goes up. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and engage super cruise. And since this is an in solar system item, it knows I want to do super cruise and not a hyper jump. Two, one, engage. J is the default key for your super cruise or hyperspeed. And remember now, we've got unexplored here. You can see that it's unexplored in the far left. And as I get close enough, that'll change to scanning. And my scanner will slowly start determining what's going on about it. Just keep it, keep my ship pointed in the direction. It has to be in your forward view, in a 10 degree cone on your forward view, roughly. And it will automatically scan it. Now my speed's slowly increasing. And uh, pretty soon I will be moving at this thing fairly quickly. Now if we fly past it, we'll have to start the scan all over again. So we really don't want to fly past it. Two minutes out. Usually on planets or stars, uh, 80 light seconds out to 40 light seconds out is when you will start being able to scan it. Or things like asteroid belts and things like that, it can get down to five light seconds. So you got to be fairly, fairly close to it. So I'm going to go ahead and slow down here because I'm going to fly by it. 
have gone too uh, too fast. And boom, goes by really quick. So I'm going to turn around. You can see in my radar, it's gone right behind me. And we'll bring it on in. So right there, you can see that the scanning has started. But at this point, I don't really care about getting close enough to it to come out of Super Cruise. I just want to give my ship time to scan it. Hear the beeping, tick, 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 and boom, there it is. Now that I've discovered this, this is going to increase my value of being able to sell this information to star systems 20 light years or more away. But in this case, uh, I don't want to do that. I want to navigate to remain, lock destination, and it is directly behind me. Navigate it up to the top and pull back on the stick. And hit J for jump. And it's telling me to throttle up to engage, so I'm going to push my throttle all the way forward. And there I go. your star. We're going to pull away from that. And we're going to go ahead and look for a station to sell this at. And you'll notice I got a little close to the star. My heat level started going up. You won't start taking damage until about 120 to 140 percent. That is a planet, the circle. That is an asteroid belt. A nav beacon, the little square within a square. And let's see here. We're going to go to Wooler Terminal. That little... Uh, Square with a other square inside of it means it's a big terminal and it's going to have most services. So I'm going to lock the destination, turn around, and since I'm going 15 times the speed of light, it shouldn't be too long before I'm there. And you'll notice that uh, when you're in Super Cruise, your throttle response is very slow. It takes a while to build up speed. You can build up to upwards of 2,000 times the speed of light. You can, I, I hear, fly between systems, but uh, five light years apart, or one light year apart, is going to take you about 14 hours of real time. So uh, you'll want to use your um, hyperspace. And let's see what is out here. Looks like we've got a hauler, the Evster, harmless. And he's wanted, so I could uh, try to get him I don't have an interdiction drive, so I wouldn't be able to do that. And he just jumped out of system. Sidewinder. I'm not scanning it because it's not in front of me. Let's see if there's anybody else in front of me here. There we go. Jeff Rubin, harmless. And Jeff Rubin is clean. I would incur a bounty if I attacked him. Lucky Larry is harmless. Oh, Lucky Larry, but he is wanted. He's not so lucky. Well, I guess he is lucky because I'm not going to attack him today. I mean, in at 12 seconds, so I'm going to just kind of steady out. 11 seconds, 10 seconds. And Wooler Terminal. Resource extraction sites. If you uh, equip yourself with a mining laser and a refinery, you can go there and use your mining lasers to knock resources off of the uh, asteroids you'll be flying amongst. And what happens is, is you scan the asteroid pieces that you knock off, and it'll tell you the uh, the minerals that the aster the pieces you've knocked off are made of. When you scoop them up, they occupy your scoop, and you have to decide which mineral you want to refine. And you can do that one at a time, and you choose which mineral, and slowly refine various chunks until you have a hundred percent of that mineral, and then that will go into your hold as a block of that, uh, that mineral, that uh, raw material, which you then can sell at any uh, station that uh, buys it. And that can be profitable, but it does take some time, four or five, six pieces before you can actually uh, have a piece that you can sell. And you cannot sell the uh, partially produced pieces. 
And you'll see that my throttle is staying steady. I'm not moving it, but I am slowing down. That's just a natural part of Super Cruise. And uh, you'll get used to it as you fly more and more. Oh, let's go ahead and uh, scan the system to see if we got anything uh, in the area. My D scanner, Discovery scanner. And it does not look like anything has been discovered. All right, we're coming up on being able to jump. I'm going to hit J and disengage. It should get me within eight or nine kilometers of the station. Someday. All right, this is a big terminal. Now, what you have to do here is you have to determine where the area of rotation is. And I can see it right there. That's one area of rotation, but I don't see the docking ports there. So I think it's going to be down here on the bottom. I could be wrong. Um, so now I'm going to call the station. Lower terminal. I'm going to request docking. Docking request granted. And I'm going to allocate to engines so that I go fast. And I can see a contrail off to my right of another uh, ship flying in. So I think I'm in the right place. And we're going to go ahead and fly uh, under the station. And uh, see if we can find the docking ring for entry. And I think it. Uh, it is underneath here. Sure enough, there it is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and fly over here. Slow it on down. Unallocate some engine. It'll give me a little more fine throttle control. I'm going to throw my landing gear down. And I'm going to go ahead and fly up. And roll it on in. Looks like we've got someone else trying to play around here a little bit. It is a multiplayer game, so there are other players there. I'm going to roll it in and bring it on up. And up is down and down is up, you'll notice. I'm going to straighten her out, slow her down, and there we go. I'm going to be docking pad 4, which I will show you when I get in here. The system is still rotating, so I want to make sure I stay up with that. And I'm fortunate in that docking pad 4 is in the far section. A lot of times if you get a docking pad that's right in the front, it's hard to see it because you've already flown past it. I'm going to fly on up to it. Again, I'm flying towards the four. Four is in the back of the square that's being highlighted for me, which means that I'm approaching in the right direction. Also, you'll see the little angled pad deflector, thrust deflector or something like that. That indicates I'm coming in the right way. My gear are down. I'm going to slow it on down and drop it down here. And I'm going to drop on down. Fly it on in. And there we go. Engines disengage. Now, typically, these kind of state starports have upwards of 36 or 40 uh, landing pads. But just etiquette says bring yourself into the hangar. When you launch, you're going to have to go.